Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you? How's things in your room? I hope they're doing well. I hope everything is good. Um, if this video sounds different to you, and Friday's video sounds different to you, then you should watch a video I did yesterday. I'll put a link in the description that kind of describes it a little bit, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. Essentially, what it all comes down to is I'm getting rid of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this is something I've pondered uh, for quite a while now, and I've looked for alternatives for Adobe Premiere Pro in the past and couldn't find anything that fit my needs. Um, but I finally found something that does fit my needs. I used it to produce Friday's video. So hopefully Friday's video doesn't look any different, um, but it but it it sounds a little different. And the reason is that Premiere Pro has allowed me to cheat a little bit over the last three years with my audio. Um, I'm using a, a fairly inexpensive condenser mic run through a crappy uh, XLR Phantom Power straight into my camera, which makes it hiss. If you listen closely, you can probably hear a pretty loud hissing noise. That's because this camera's preamp is not very good at boosting the volume of this microphone. So it kind of tries to bring it up as much as it can, which introduces all this really bad noise. And I think what I need is a preamp. I'm not positive, although I did some research this weekend and I added a preamp to my Amazon wish list, and somebody has already purchased that for me. So thank you uh, for purchasing that for me. It'll probably show up this week and I'll open it and cry. I hope it takes care of the problem because Premiere Pro had a plugin called Denoiser. It actually had gone through. I think it was called Denoiser, and then it wasn't called. It was called Adaptive Noise Reduction, and now it's back to be called Denoiser. I don't know. It, it's been through a bunch of changes, but it worked really well at pulling out that microphone hiss. I don't have that option anymore because I'm getting rid of Premiere Pro. Um, and the reason is simple. It costs a lot of money. Um, even with my educator discount, I'm paying like $30 a month uh, or $20-something a month for Premiere uh, that's for all the Adobe things, but I don't ever use anything other than Premiere. And I just can't really afford it. For a long time, I kind of kept a Patreon and promoted a Patreon and made about half of the money that that the subscription costs through Patreon. I don't promote that anymore, and I please don't go donate to me on Patreon. I feel really weird about it. Um, I don't feel like I'd do anything to deserve that. So uh, for the longest time, that was kind of taking care of half of it. So I was like, I'll keep it because I do have Photoshop and I do have InDesign and all these other tools at my disposal if I need them. Um, but really, the only time I ever needed those tools was at work. And my work provides me with uh, Adobe account for work purposes. So I don't need it for work. I don't need it for my personal use. All I needed was Premiere. So there's no point in me paying for it. I can't afford it. It's just another bill I can cut out of my month. The problems were, prior to this changeover, um, all the titles that you see, the little thing that's down here that moves in and out, uh, the intro, um, that all was done in a way that I used Premiere to render all those things. All of that is pre-rendered video. It's not title cards. If you know anything about editing, you can have title cards and they can be animated. But I did pre-rendered video because the sound effects and stuff that come along with all that, if you listen closely, there's a sound. And that, I needed, I, I didn't want to have to include the sounds and all that stuff every time I wanted to pull that into a project. So I made it a pre-rendered video with an alpha channel, which makes it transparent. So you can't, it doesn't obscure me. And for the longest time, I couldn't find video editing software that would honor the transparency of that layer. The videos, I believe, are rendered as QuickTime movies, which was an Apple format, which works with the with the transparencies. Um, and I couldn't find one that worked. And I found that um, that's been fixed. So right now, this video, as well as Friday's video, have been rendered with ShotCut. ShotCut is a free and open source video editing software. And I found it to be really intuitive to use. It really friendly. It works great. Uh, the file sizes are a little outrageous. I'm trying to figure out ways to reduce my file size. By comparison, I think Friday's episode was a little over 400 megabytes. My typical 10 minute long video that I do on YouTube is usually about 150. So it's three times the size, which takes three times the length to upload. I mean, disk space is inexpensive, so I don't care, but I would like to have the file size little. Uh, there's no point in a video like this where there's not a whole lot of movement, a whole lot of action. 
it doesn't need to be very large. It can be pretty heavily compressed and it's fine. So I have to figure out the video editing or the video export options. But so far all the other stuff works. The other thing was at the time when I was really looking at getting rid of Premiere, I was doing the gaming stuff and I was doing a lot of gaming on my phone. And the phone recording software that I could find did not do what's called continuous bitrate. So um, that basically means that the the number of frames that the phone would render would vary um, and it would cause the audio to go out of sync after a while. And I couldn't find a video editor that could handle that. I believe Shotcut can handle that. I haven't messed with it because I'm still not doing gaming videos anymore, but um, I don't need that functionality. I just need to be able to cut, splice, do some quick transitions, do some titles, um, and it seems like Shotcut can handle all of it. And I'm really impressed with it. It works really well, super smooth. So. Um, from now forward, I think I'll be using Shotcut um, as much as I possibly can to do these videos. I don't know uh, if I'm ever going to run into an issue with it when I'm doing project videos. We'll come, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I will be doing project videos starting very soon. Um, so look forward to those. Um, I'd like to do a little bit more electronic stuff. So we'll see um, if that works out this year. But I just wanted to let you know, in case anybody was wondering, yes, I'm dumping Adobe Premiere, I'm going to Shotcut, and it might be a bumpy ride. So, uh, bear with me, um, and thank you for bearing with me. You know what, thank you for everything you do for me. Thank you for coming back and watching videos and giving me comments, because that is the only reason I continue to do it. I don't do it for views, I don't do it for... Um, money or subscriptions or whatever. I'm not chasing a play button. I just do it to have a conversation with you and I really appreciate you just checking in on me. Thank you for that. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from Wikipedia. When was the United States Capitol moved from Philadelphia to Washington DC? The mansion at 6th and Market Streets served as the presidential mansion of George Washington and John Adams from 1790 to 1800. Philadelphia served as the temporary capital of the United States during that time, while the federal city was under construction in the District of Columbia.